Hi, I'm Ketan from Brightside Dental. Welcome to episode 42 of BSTV. Today I'm going to talk about two things which are both tied together. So one is regarding waiting times for appointments with us. And then the second one is about us taking deposits for bookings. So as many of our NHS patients may have found at times, it can be a significant amount of time waiting for their next appointment. Sometimes it can be a number of weeks and even we're having times where it's six to eight weeks in advance. Now, as a practice, it's not ideal. It's not something we do out of choice. And the two main factors are that one, um, that people may not be aware, the way the NHS system works is we have quotas from the government as to how much NHS dentistry we're able to carry out. And we have to spread that evenly over the course of the year. Another aspect is that we only have certain days and times where we have a contract to provide NHS treatment. And outside of those times, we're not able to offer that. Um, and uh, an uh, well, another reason is that we're fortunate we are a very popular practice and we're proud of that and partly as a result it does mean that uh, we do sometimes have increased waiting times. Now one of the single biggest factors for our long waits is the level of lost appointment time we have. So I'd like to share with you some figures for last month. So. In the month of September, we lost almost 58 hours of clinical time due to people either um, failing to attend their appointments or due to late cancellations where we couldn't then book someone else in at such short notice. Now, just to put that into context, we have four treatment rooms in the practice and that amounts to well over one treatment room not being able to be used at all for more than a month. Um, so it, it's really significant. Now, um, I was having a conversation with one of my patients um, a while ago, and it is a conversation that's had with many of our patients. And his name's Glenn, and he actually wrote an article off the back of our conversation regarding our loss of appointment times and the impact it has for us as a practice and he compared it to similar situation for restaurants and um, with the article I'm, I'm going to include that so that if you wish to you can have a read I, I think it's really interesting and well written um, and it does raise a number of points and um, some of where potential issues may lie which um, I will let you have a read and form your own opinion of. Now, in terms of things we do as a practice, we, we do our best to minimise lost appointments where we can and to accommodate people in the best way. So we do always encourage pre-booking appointments in advance in that way. One, you're not going to have to wait nearer the time to book an appointment and also you're more likely to get the times and days that would suit you. As our regular patients will know, we do provide reminders for appointments. So we send um, email reminders in advance of appointments, text messages, as well as phone calls the days before. Now, all of this is a courtesy. It's not something we have to do or we're obliged to do. Um, we do it to try and help our patients and also to try and minimize loss of appointments. However, even despite this, as you see, we do get a significant loss. Uh, another thing we do is to take deposits for bookings. Now, that is something we've introduced some time ago and so, some of our regular long-standing patients in the past were not used to this being the case, but it is a practice policy. And the reason we do that is primarily to reduce our lost appointment times. It, it's not for us to make money from this and so forth. It's more as a deterrent. However, one significant problem we do have 
is that for NHS appointments, legally we're not able to charge for missed appointments. And unfortunately, we find that the more significant proportion of our lost appointments is, is from NHS bookings. And as a practice, we don't want to penalise other patients or them having to pay more for their treatment because of other people um, not turning up for appointments and we really don't feel that's fair so we, we do not want to introduce that and on the other hand we do ideally want to provide NHS treatment as well as private for those who wish to have that so that then they, they have a choice of the type of treatment they would like to have and, and we would still like to continue that. However, as a practice, we do need to strike a balance because ultimately we have to be profitable in order to be able to serve our patients in the best way because otherwise we're going to have to compri compromise on the quality of service treatments we can provide and which certainly is something we don't want to do. Um, we did recently in our uh, last team meeting discuss this issue between the team and we went through the things we're already doing, looking at ways we can possibly change things, improve things. Um, so certainly what I would say is if you do have any suggestions, please do drop us an email, give us a phone call, let us know your suggestions and we'll definitely consider them because we're always looking at ways we can improve what we do, whether it's in this area or generally with the service we provide. Thanks very much for watching today and join me next time for more tips and advice on improving and maintaining your oral health and practice news.